the Sukhoi S-70 Okotnik B, known simply as Okotnik, the Hunter. Unlike the buzzing reconnaissance drones that once loitered over Iraq or Afghanistan, this machine is built to duel in the skies against the best the West can offer. With its 20-meter wingspan, stealthy flying wing design, and a takeoff weight close to 20 tons, the Okotnik is less a drone and more a robotic bomber, a ghost companion to Russia's Su-57 stealth fighter. Powered by a single AL-31F turbofan engine, the Okotnik can push close to 1,000 kilometers per hour. That's slower than a fighter jet, but far faster than most drones in active service, placing it in a league with heavy strike UAVs like America's MQ-28 Ghostbat or China's Sharp Sword. Its range, stretching beyond 6,000 kilometers, grants it the ability to penetrate deep into contested territory, where it can carry up to 2.8 tons of bombs or missiles, a payload heavier than many manned light fighters. Cost remains murky, but estimates suggest that each Okotnik could exceed $100 million once serial production stabilizes, making it nearly as expensive as a frontline fighter. Why so much? Because it is not designed for counterinsurgency skirmishes. The Okotnik is built for great power conflict, where stealth, payload, and autonomy matter more than affordability. Where Russia differs from its rivals is in doctrine. The United States fields the MQ-9 Reaper for long-endurance precision strikes, Israel deploys the Heron and Harup for persistent surveillance and kamikaze missions, and China has flooded export markets with the Wing Lung series. Russia, however, has lagged behind in combat-proven UAV operations – until now. The Okotnik is Moscow's attempt to leapfrog straight into the heavyweight class, pairing it directly with the Su-57 to form a loyal wingman concept, where man and machine fight as one. This is the Hunter's promise. Not just a drone, but an autonomous strike aircraft designed to fight NATO, dodge Patriot batteries, and stalk the skies where only the boldest machines dare to fly. The Okotnik does not rise into an empty sky. For two decades, the United States has led the charge, unleashing the Predator and its successor, the MQ-9 Reaper, against insurgents and terrorists. The Reaper, cruising at only 370 kilometers per hour, is slow, but it can remain in the air for more than 24 hours, circling patiently like a vulture. Its 1.7-ton payload of Hellfire missiles and precision bombs has struck thousands of targets, and at a price of just $32 million each, America can deploy them in massive numbers. Yet there lies the weakness. Against modern air defenses, the Reaper is fragile a lumbering target for radar-guided missiles. It is perfect for the deserts of Afghanistan, but not for skies filled with Patriot batteries and fifth-generation fighters. That is why America is now moving toward the next phase, stealth and loyal wingmen. Projects like the Boeing MQ-28 Ghostbat show the new direction, smaller and lighter than the Okotnik. With an 11.7-meter wingspan and a payload of just 1.5 tons, it is designed to fly in swarms alongside F-35s. The Ghost Bat is cheaper, under $20 million, disposable if necessary, a robotic partner that can scout, jam, or sacrifice itself. At the opposite extreme sits the secret RQ-180, a flying wing the size of a bomber, rumored to cost more than $200 million, a reconnaissance ghost built for the most dangerous skies. America spreads its bets, endurance in the Reaper, swarming in the Ghost Bat, stealth in the RQ-180. Russia has chosen a different path, to gamble everything on one heavy hunter. China has taken yet another route. For export and influence, it mass-produces the Wing Lung II, a Reaper copy available for as little as two to three million dollars. Dozens of countries in Africa and the Middle East now fly them, hunting insurgents with Chinese-made guided bombs. They are cheap, expendable, and effective against weak enemies, but they are slow topping out at 370 kilometers per hour, and their payload is only 480 kilograms. For home use, Beijing keeps sharper blades in reserve. The Sharp Sword, unveiled in 2013, is a stealthy flying wing much like the Okotnik, with a two-ton payload and speeds approaching 1,000 kilometers per hour. Yet it remains in limited testing, while Russia has already flown the Okotnik in joint exercises with its Su-57 stealth fighters. In this race, China can flood the battlefield with numbers, but Russia aims to send one heavyweight through the storm. 
Israel plays the drone game differently. It has no giant stealth hunter in its arsenal. Instead, it dominates with swarms of smaller machines. The IAI Heron for surveillance, the Hermes 900 for endurance patrols, and the infamous Harup, a loitering munition that is essentially a flying missile. Only 3 meters long, the Harup dives at 185 kilometers per hour onto its target, detonating with a 23-kilogram warhead. At under $1 million per unit, Israel can launch them in swarms, overwhelming defenses by sheer volume. This is a doctrine of speed and saturation, in which hundreds of small kamikaze drones pave the way for manned jets to strike. For Russia, however, the doctrine is the opposite. A few giant drones to stalk heavily defended skies and deliver crushing payloads. Europe, too, has dreamed of stealth UAVs. The Neuron, built under Dassault's leadership, first flew in 2012. With a payload of 2 tons and speeds near 980 kilometers per hour, it mirrors the Okotnik in design. But it is only a demonstrator, a prototype with no serial production. Its cost exceeded 100 million euros, and Europe never pushed it into operational service. Russia, by contrast, is forcing the Okotnik into serial production, accepting the high price in exchange for a working weapon of war. Here, the Russian philosophy becomes clear. While others scatter their resources across swarms, endurance patrols, and kamikaze munitions, Moscow has placed its bet on one machine that combines stealth, speed, and payload. With a maximum of 2.8 tons of bombs and missiles carried inside its bays, the Okotnik outguns the Reaper, overshadows the Ghost Bat, and rivals the European Neuron. It can haul cruise missiles or anti-radar weapons designed to blind NATO defenses. At nearly 1,000 kilometers per hour, it flies almost three times faster than a Reaper, and its range of more than 6,000 kilometers lets it strike deep into Europe or the Pacific. When paired with the Su-57, it becomes more than a drone. It becomes a loyal wingman that can extend radar vision, lure enemy fighters into traps, or deliver a first strike while its human counterpart stays safely out of reach. But all this comes at a price. Each Okotnik may exceed $100 million, nearly as much as a manned fighter. Russia cannot afford to build hundreds. At best, it may field a few dozen. Against the thousands of Reapers, Ghost Bats, and Wing Lungs, the Okotnik is rare, elite, and irreplaceable. It is not a drone of attrition, but a scalpel meant for the highest-risk missions, the strikes against NATO airbases, the attempts to cripple carrier strike groups, the raids into skies where only the boldest machines can fly. In this way, the Okotnik B is not simply another drone. It is Russia's bid to redefine what an unmanned aircraft can be. A bomber in all but name, a hunter born for the age of great power conflict. Modern warfare is now shaped by drones in every domain. Cheap quadcopters, long-range kamikaze UAVs, stealth prototypes, and loyal wingmen. Russia's Okotnik B is being built for the top tier of this revolution, but to see where it fits, we must look at how drones are being used today. In Ukraine, small commercial drones dominate daily combat. Quadcopters costing $1,000 are fitted with grenades or RPG warheads and used to destroy tanks worth millions. FPV racing drones dive directly into armored vehicles, carrying explosive charges of 1 to 2 kilograms. Russia and Ukraine each lose thousands of these drones every month, but they are cheap enough to replace. They have turned the battlefield into a transparent grid. Artillery units are spotted and destroyed within minutes, soldiers in trenches are hunted from above, and movement across open ground is nearly impossible. For the cost of one Okotnik, Russia could purchase more than 100,000 FPV drones. But those drones cannot penetrate NATO defenses or carry cruise missiles. At the operational level, kamikaze drones like Iran's Shahed-136 have changed the logic of air defense. Each Shahed costs about $20,000. To stop it, defenders often fire interceptor missiles worth $500,000 or more. During heavy strikes on Ukraine's energy grid, Russia launched swarms of 40 to 50 Shaheds at once. Even if 80% were intercepted, the rest still hit their targets – power stations, warehouses, and command nodes. This cost imbalance is devastating over time. But Shaheds are slow, with a top speed of only 185 kilometers per hour, and noisy enough to be tracked by radar and even sound. Against U.S. carrier groups or NATO radar networks, they would be ineffective. That is where heavyweight drones like the Okotnik come in. 
with a maximum speed close to 1,000 km per hour and a combat radius of 3,000 km, it fills the gap between cheap drones and manned bombers. Its internal payload of 2.8 tons allows it to carry KH-59 Mk-2 stealth cruise missiles or anti-radar weapons. These missiles alone cost between $1 to $2 million each, designed to blind advanced systems like Patriot or NASAMS. Unlike Shayheads, which overwhelm by quantity, the Okotnik threatens by quality. One successful strike could destroy a billion-dollar radar station or an Aegis-equipped destroyer. Concrete examples show how doctrine is shifting. In September 2019, drones and cruise missiles hit Saudi Aramco's oil facilities, knocking out 5% of the world's oil supply overnight. In 2020, Azerbaijan's Bayraktar TB-2 drones helped destroy over 500 Armenian armored vehicles and air defense systems in Nagorno-Karabakh, turning the tide of the war in weeks. In Ukraine, FPVs and Shahids have forced both sides to dig in, abandon open maneuver, and spend billions on electronic warfare and air defense. These examples prove drones now deliver effects once reserved for manned strike aircraft and artillery divisions. Unlike the TB-2 with its 150-kilogram payload or the Shahed with its 40-kilogram warhead, the Okotnik can carry guided bombs of 500 kilograms each. Unlike the Reaper, which tops out at 370 kilometers per hour, the Okotnik can cross defended airspace before slow interceptors can react. Unlike the Neuron, which remains only a European demonstrator, the Okotnik is entering series production. And unlike Israel's Harup, which sacrifices itself with every strike, the Okotnik is designed to return and fight again. The challenge is numbers. The U.S. has more than 300 operational Reapers. China has exported hundreds of Wing Lung drones. Israel produces drones by the thousands. Russia, under sanctions and budget strain, may only build a few dozen Okotniks by 2030. Each one may cost $100 million, equivalent to a modern fighter jet. That means they will not patrol daily or strike minor targets. They will be reserved for the highest value missions, taking out NATO's AWACS surveillance aircraft, striking airbases in Poland or Romania, or threatening carriers in the Mediterranean. This makes the Okotnik part of a layered drone doctrine. Russia floods the front with Orlans and commercial FPVs for reconnaissance. It uses Iranian Shahids for attrition and terror strikes. And above all, it develops the Okotnik as the rare hunter, deployed only when the stakes are highest. It is the opposite of Israel's swarm logic or China's export model. It is a bomber drone built for strategic war. The question is simple. Will a few of these change the balance or vanish under the weight of swarms and numbers? Tell me what you think in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us for the next mission.